Hello to our Pleasant Green Church family and our listeners for our Sunday School lesson, which is printed out of the Faith Pathway Study Manual. This is Minister Leonard Harris, and again, it is our pleasure to discuss and to bring the Word of God in the form of a Sunday School lesson to you uh, for the benefit of improving us in this journey. Our lesson is Lesson 2 for June the 14th, 2020. It's uh, out of Unit 1 entitled Wisdom in Proverbs. And our lesson's title for this Sunday is Seeking Meaning. Seeking Meaning. Our devotional reading is Proverbs 2, verses 12 through 22. And our background scripture is Genesis 39 and Proverbs 2. And then our printed passage is the second chapter of Proverbs, verses 1 through 11. And our key verse is Proverbs, the second chapter, and verse 6. And it reads, The Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And our lesson's aims are, Understand that the search for wisdom that comes from God is more important than striving for wealth or any other temporal gain. Yearn for the wisdom that comes from God more than you desire wealth or fame. Make a consistent effort to center your heart, will, and thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. And this particular lesson has three different divisions or three different sections. And the first one is entitled, Will You Accept? Will You Accept? And then our second one is, God Gives Wisdom. And our final one is, Finally, getting an understanding. Finally, getting an understanding. And that is what our hope and our prayer is for this lesson. That we leave from this lesson with a further and more profound understanding of what God is saying through the words that were printed in the book of Proverbs, many refer to as the book of wise instruction. And so as we look into our lesson, and the focus being, of course, again, that we are trying to gather the meaning uh, for the lesson And uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to put uh, before all that the lesson's focus is upon the wisdom of God and who in their right mind would not want portions and measures of the wisdom of God, especially in this day and time. It is appropriate and it is rewarding at any time, but it is more significant and more beneficial when we face times of challenge and times of uncertainty. And uh, I liked one of the statements that was made in the biblical context which says, after all, 
life experiences are one of humankind's best teachers. And uh, that in itself is a mouthful because life is the true teacher. Um, and many times uh, we hear certain profound or proverbial sayings uh, in our youth and they don't uh, have as much significance while we are young and we don't always gravitate to them. But as we grow older, the experiences in life begin to cause the words that we heard printed in text to actually take lively form, to actually come to life to us. And as we learn the lessons of life, we find that those sayings that were recited to us while we were young, that those sayings were true, that the words of wisdom that were spoken to us in our youth, that they actually were more, they were worth more than gold or silver or the riches of this world. And in our lesson, it also speaks to us uh, about desiring the wisdom of God above wealth or fame or recognition or above things considered to be precious. Um, and so uh, at the beginning of our lesson, our first subtitle says, Will you accept? Will you accept? And uh, one of the things about wisdom is, is that wisdom is not some entity or some uh, containment that can be stored or can be placed uh, on a shelf or uh, somehow capsulized in a picture frame. And you can purchase it and then you can hang it somewhere to be viewed. Uh, that's not the purpose or the function of wisdom. And so what we find in the beginning parts of our lesson are action words. Uh, it speaks to us about the acceptance of God's wisdom, but then it provides actions of how to be receptive, of how to receive the wisdom of God. And in I'm going to lift these actions uh, that are required by us to be the recipients of the wisdom of God. And in the first uh, verse, it says, My son, if thou would receive my words, and then hide my commandments, if you would incline your ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, if you would cry, plead, if you would submit yourself after knowledge and then lift your voice for understanding. If you would seek after this knowledge, this wisdom, if you would seek after it with the same fervor, with the same intensity, as though you were going after silver or gold or hidden treasures, if you would put forth the same effort that you exemplify when you're trying to receive other things. Let me make a distinction here, because I don't want wisdom to be somehow contrasted or summarized as a thing, 
But if we would put forth the same diligence that we apply to seek things and we would ex exemplify and e put forth the same exertion towards trying to receive wisdom and that's what scripture is saying to us then we would understand the reverence of the Lord I don't uh, like always to use the fear of the Lord because it's not God's intention that we would be afraid of God or that we would be fearful of God, but it is God's intention that we would reverence God. And then in doing these things, then we would find the knowledge of God, which in and above all else is the greatest blessing that could ever befall upon us. So I want to just uh, lift uh, some uh, scriptures to uh, uh, tie us into uh, will you accept and recognize, first of all, are we willing to put forth the work? Are we willing to put forth the diligence to put forth the effort to receive the wisdom of God? Because just uh, to verbally say with our lips, Lord, I want your wisdom, and then sit and wait for it to come, means that we really were not earnestly or sincerely seeking the wisdom of God. So one of the first places that I wanted to lift in the study is that uh, if we would go to the book of James, uh, because uh, James uh, clearly uh, explains to us uh, how we go about in this mode of reception of God's word. Now, in the first chapter of James and the 22nd verse, uh, it gives uh, a great uh, word for us to put into action. <clears throat> and it clearly states that, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So it clearly states plainly to us that if all we are are hearers of the word and not doers, that we're not deceiving anyone else, we're not tricking or fooling anyone else, but we are deceiving ourselves. It says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And when he's looking at himself in the mirror, he observes himself and he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. He saw himself, but he immediately turns away from what he saw as though there was no need for correction or improvement. It says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, Let's, let's reaffirm that. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, into the perfect law of freedom, into the perfect law of deliverance, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Not the one who is good at reciting what he hears, but not good at doing what he hears. Now, another uh, passage 
uh, to read. This is out of the first number of Psalms, and it is the third, the, the concluding of the third verse. And it talks about that whatever he does will be blessed. Psalm number one, the conclusion of verse three. And it says, whatever, whatsoever he does will be blessed. Not what he says, not what he thinks, not what he dreams, not what he imagines, not what he eats, but it says, whatsoever he does will be blessed. But first, the preceding verses, one down two, three, which requires action. Again, it's about what we do, not what we say, and not certainly just what we hear. Now also, uh, in the book of James, because we're speaking of exception, or we're speaking of accepting. And the first uh, part of our lesson says, will you accept? And then it tells us these things that we must do in order to accept the word of God. And so in the first chapter of James, it also tells us this, because we're speaking about wisdom. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. It will be given to anyone who asks freely and without question. But then it says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. If we enter into our request of God to receive wisdom, but we enter it, enter it unsure, uncertain, doubting, questioning, well, then we have defeated our request from the jump. And so what it says then, if you enter along those pretenses that you will not expect to receive anything from the Lord, because why? Well, verse 8 says, because he's a double-minded person. He's unstable in all his ways. So first we have to be sincere and first we have to be certain that the one we're calling out to is able to grant us what we ask. Now, also we need to understand why has God in God's spirit provided and presented to us a inkling into the wisdom that God possesses. Why is it important to God that we would have insights into the precepts of God relative to wisdom? Well, we will let scripture again answer these questions because what I think or what I may say is not what God or scripture has said. So in the 119th Psalm or number of Psalm, and uh, this would be the ninth verse. So now James talked about the conditioning of the individual when they ask God or seek God and ask for wisdom. Here, we want to look at 
the reward of receiving it. So the 119th number of the Psalms and starting at uh, verse 9, and it says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. And then it says, With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. With my whole heart, with all that is within me, with all that I have, I have sincerely sought after you to seek your commandments. And then it says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so a part of this doing and this accepting requires a action upon ourselves. Now in the next section of our lesson, it speaks of God gives wisdom. And it says, for the Lord gives wisdom out of the Lord's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. And he is a buckler, a shield, a barrier to them that walk uprightly. And he keeps the paths of judgment and he preserves the way of his saints. And we uh, often sing uh, a song uh, which uh, is worded that uh, we're asking the Lord to order my steps. And uh, in the uh, text, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by God. And our request in music is for the Lord to order our steps. Um, but I want uh, to just uh, lift another uh, passage of scripture uh, just to uh, give a little more of an insight into uh, God's uh, wisdom coming out of God's mouth. And then uh, when uh, we begin to speak about the paths of judgment and, and how uh, God protects us uh, along the way. Um, in the commentary of our second uh, section, it, it, it speaks about that even though God is our protector and God is our shield, that it doesn't mean that we won't have trouble along the way. Uh, a lot of times uh, that becomes a discouragement uh, for some who uh, begin this uh, walk with the Lord, uh, who begin this journey of living unto the submission of the will of God. Sometimes uh, in our earlier stages, uh, some people look at accepting God and accepting Christ as the Lord of their life as though it's like uh, some kind of uh, insurance policy. And that means that now the world can't touch me, that uh, now the, uh, uh, I'm free from any problems or any uh, test or any... Uh, challenges or or any uh, disruptive things in life because now I belong to God and God is my protector and you the world uh, y'all uh, Satan uh, nobody can do anything to me now because I am a child of God well uh, God definitely is our protector uh, but I want us to think about uh, this path, uh, how God directs us to walk uprightly and uh, 
where we travel, our steps that we take. And I want to uh, look at that out of uh, the book of Matthew. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and beginning at the 13th verse. Uh, so uh, this here, uh, Matthew seven, thirteen, and it reads, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Let's read that again. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. If you're entering by the narrow gate, the conclusion of verse 13 says that there would be many who go in by it. That would be the wide one that leads to destruction. So first, we have to understand that on this path, that don't look for a crowd. Don't look for masses of people. Don't look for it to be the trending thing to do. Don't look for a lot of recognition from others around you because you've chosen the narrow gate. But understand that the reward is for those who enter in at the narrow gate, but not those who follow the crowd or who are convicted by their peers, by what is socially acceptable. So it goes on in verse 14, it says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. The question we have to ask ourselves, are we trying to live or die? Now, when we think of that, although today death is quick, we're here one moment and gone the next. But when we look back, to the book of Genesis, and we read where God told Abraham, uh, told Adam, that if he ate of that tree, that he would surely die. If he was disobedient, that he would surely die. If he was not submission, in submission to the will of God, that he would surely die. But we know that Adam lived after he ate and disobeyed God. But the life that Adam lived was not profitable or beneficial. Adam was spiritually dead. And therefore, Adam reaped the things of, him, of his flesh, but not of the spirit. And so... A lot of times we look at all of the people who went to the broad gate. We look at how many, look at the crowd, my goodness, it, look at all the people. Uh, certainly all of them cannot be wrong. There, there, there must be something that they're doing that's right because look at how many it is. But again, Scripture tells us to open our eyes and to realize that those that are going in at the narrow gate, because it requires discipline, which is why Christ made disciples, it requires discipline because it 
it is a challenge because it it causes us to uh, uh, render ourselves to a divine and di- a spiritual intervention because it requires something of us that not a lot of people are willing to submit to answer the requirement and to discipline themselves. But those that do, it says, even though it's difficult, but those that come in at the narrow gate, it leads to life. And although there are few who find it, there are still others who find it. See, see, we, we have to recognize, don't look for the crowd. Look for the few. And then be accounted as one of the few. Now, now in our concluding of our lesson, Getting Understanding, uh, it says that you will understand what is right and just and fair in every good path. You know, we just spoke about the path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. And discretion, the able, the, the ability to discern between what is right and just and fair will protect you and understanding will keep you and guard you. Now, I want to read this other passage of scripture uh, to conclude our lesson to tie in with the uh, wisdom entering into our hearts and knowledge being pleasant to us and, and, and being able to have the ability to discern uh, and understand. And, and to close out our lesson, I, I want to read out of uh, the number one or uh, First Corinthians, the uh, third chapter, uh, verses 16 through 23 and and it reads do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you if anyone defiles the temple of God God will destroy that person. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. There's a passage of scripture in Corinthians which speaks of the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. It says, well, I spoke pre-adventure of the reading of the scripture. But it says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether it's from Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's.
So, again, we have to recognize where true wisdom comes from. And certainly, uh, Scripture clearly identifies, and I'm glad that it did. the text uh, spoke of it in present terms. Uh, it says, if anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, in this time, to let them become unlearned so that they can become wise. Because this world's wisdom is foolishness to God. Um, towards the mid and the latter part of the 90s, uh, there was a statement that was sent out relative to the new industries of America. And although during the industrial age, manufacturing was one of the largest industries in America, uh, but towards the new millennium, America had uh, produced these new upcoming industries that were going to replace the present production and manufacturing practices of the nation's day. And one of those was, well, the three were sales, service, and information. And we, it was referred to that we would enter into the information highway where knowledge would be at the click of a mouse or at the press of a fingertip. And now, whatever your thought may be, there is some electronic gadget or electronic voice that provides the answer for you. But the question is, is where is the answer coming from? And so in our study, we must maintain the discipline that is provided to us through God's Spirit that we, our ears, will listen to the wisdom of God and not the foolishness of man. Now, I would like to close uh, with this because uh, the final commentary of our lesson uh, speaks about uh, the wicked, uh, that they lack proper spiritual discernment. And because of this, they are nothing more than chess pieces, pawns for Satan's work. And so uh, the beginning of our lesson, uh, part of our uh, background uh, scripture, our devotional reading, I'm sorry, is Proverbs, the second chapter of Proverbs, and verses 12 through 22. And I would ask of you, uh, in your spare time, that it would be beneficial to read Proverbs, the uh, second chapter, and read those verses um, Again, verses uh, 12 uh, through 22. Uh, just to, to begin the start of it, because, uh, again, uh, a lot of people who talk, uh, some are just talking nonsense. But listen to what Proverbs says. And it says, To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. 
whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths to deliver you from the immoral woman and from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. I want us to uh, read the beginning verses of this and follow it through. Again, uh, this is uh, upon us that are continuing to study and indulge ourselves in the teachings and the wisdom and understanding of God through Scripture. And as always, it is our prayer that uh, something was said in our lesson uh, that would be beneficial, that would uh, encourage us, that would also instruct and compel us by the teaching of God's word to make us better servants that we may continue in this walk and this journey with God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.